This is part 7 in the series of videos in which I'm showing some cheap electronics kits. This is another kit I bought off eBay. Uh, this one was £9.95 delivered and it is a Tetris um, electronic game. So uh, what we'll do is we'll start assembling this and um, see if the kit is uh, any good. Uh, as ever, this is not a review of this kit, it's more whether or not uh, it's worth the money I paid for it in terms of its uh, fun factor and um, whether it would seem to be a good kit to uh, learn electronics with. So let's get it unpacked, see what's in here. So this is exactly how it turned up. So we've got the displays. Looks like quite a nice quality board. It is. Yeah, it's a good material board as well. So it looks like quite a good quality board for a change. So quite often these kits have very low grade boards, but this one looks quite good. USB cable, no idea what that's for. Possibly to just uh, power it. Some buttons, another display sounder, capacitors, the all important uh, microprocessor. Very strange way to package that. Good way to damage it but uh, hopefully it will be fine. And just a few more buttons, switches. Okay so not a great deal in here so um, as you can see no instructions whatsoever so uh, presumably they're just uh, assuming that um, you can just uh, either guess where the parts go or um, as ever the um, designations on the silt screen seem to indicate the component values and there aren't many components anyway so uh, let's get on and start assembling this. I'll start by fitting uh, the resistor. I'm looking on the board there's only one resistor position so it must go there. Okay, so that's the resistor fitted. We'll now fit the two capacitors. So it looks like we have one to go here and one to go here. They are underneath the IC. I can't see any other locations for them, so presumably we have to lie down this one. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to fit the socket first uh, and then we'll see what space we've got for the two capacitors. I don't think they fit on the back, but it um, seems a bit of an odd arrangement considering how much space that uh, they've got available on the board. It's a bit of a strange place to put the capacitors, but uh, get this fitted to just uh, undo this tape first. It's not a good idea to use sellotape to um, attach electronic components, it generates a lot of static but uh, as I say hopefully it hasn't done any damage. A few bent pins on the IC but uh, should be fine. Make sure we get this in the right way round. Okay, so that's the socket installed, and the next thing is we'll get the two capacitors fitted. So, as I said, these fit underneath the IC, so we will need to lay them down. Okay, that's those fitted. Uh, we'll now fit the switches. Okay, so 
Okay, well the parts weren't very well packed, so some of the pins on the switches were bent. So what I'm going to do is I've just soldered two of the pins and I'm going to reheat them and push the switch all the way in. Hopefully it will straighten out the pins. Okay, so they're all sitting nice and flat now. We'll finish soldering them. Okay, that's the switches fitted. We'll fit the buttons later. Next thing I want to fit is the display. So we'll make sure we get it the right way up. Um, decimal points at the bottom is uh, shown on the uh, silt screen on the board. So again, we've got some bent pins on this, so. Um, just need to straighten them out to get it to go into the board. And again, I'll just solder a couple of pins and then reheat them and push the display all the way onto the board. And then double check it's the right way up before I finish soldering. Okay, next thing is we'll fit the USB connector. This uh, kit really could benefit from better packaging. The pins on almost every component have been bent, so I'll straighten these out as well so I can get it into the board. Okay, that's the socket fitted. Next thing is the switch. Okay, and now the transistor. And finally, the sounder. Okay, and that just leaves the displays. So again, the several of the pins are bent, so I'm just going to straighten the pins out and fit these to the board uh, and I'll do that off camera it's uh, obviously getting a bit tedious now watching me solder this together so I'll just get these fitted we'll get back on camera and uh, fit the final parts okay I've got those fitted uh, you do need to make sure you fit them the right way up but um, that's all the components fitted now apart from the processor and of course the uh, push buttons uh, normally when you get uh, ICs like this brand new, the pins are splayed too far apart to get into the socket. Um, the easiest way to get them straight is just to put them onto a hard surface and rock the device down if you don't have a pin straightener. And then you can just get them lined up so it'll go in. I just need to straighten a couple of these pins out. As I say, it wasn't really packed very well so the pins are a bit bent. Okay, and then uh, we'll fit this into the socket. Remove the protective cover from this display. Okay, and as you can see, I've soldered a couple of leads across the USB connector. Uh, this is just so I can power it from the bench supply. It's obviously supposed to be powered through the USB cable, but um, and it's just as easy to power it off the bench supply. And uh, of course, you can then fit the push buttons. Um, I won't do that just now, but uh, let's get this powered up and see if it actually does anything. Okay, so I'm just going to power this 
through a couple of leads from the bench supply. So we'll set the supply to 5 volts. Uh, 0.3 amps should be plenty. We'll get it connected up. Make sure the button's in the off position. Okay, and we'll see what it does on with the bench supply and then we'll power this up. Okay, well it's doing something. It actually appears to be playing the game. Strange lights. I'm using the bottom half of the display, and obviously I don't have instructions for this. I'm sure there are instructions available online. Looks like we're selecting the game here that we want to play. That's a bit rude, but uh, <laughs> okay. Well, it looks uh, quite interesting. I don't know what the games are that this has. Um, we'll start off with the first one. Yeah, so that was just selecting the game. I assume this is the score. I may end up disconnecting the sounder. Okay, well it seems to play, it seems to be working. Um, quite nice and responsive to the keys, so... Although the sound could get annoying after a while, I suspect. But no idea why it does it on just the rotation, it seems a bit peculiar. Okay, so yes, that's how the score is incrementing. Okay, well, it's uh, it's working. Um, so, um, to summarise the kit, a reasonable quality. Uh, it could do with better packaging, so not many of the, uh, not as many pins are bent over, and you don't have to spend time straightening those out, but uh, no real hardship. Um, the components are good quality, obviously it works, and uh, now that it's um, all wired up and uh, running, so whether it's worth £10 or not, I'd say it probably is. Uh, apart from anything else, this would now make quite a nice uh, project basis. You could write your own code for the processor, and um, you've got a display, or several displays, and buttons, so you could use this for other things if you wanted to. It's probably got quite a few games on here by the look of it. It does appear to have um, multiple games. It would be nice if there was a on-off switch for the sounder. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it probably is worth the money I paid for it. Um, in terms of the kit itself, it's not much of a challenge. It would be probably fairly disappointing um, in terms of the assembly. This took well, probably 15 minutes and that was working around the camera and uh, uh, yammering on but um, you could probably assemble this in five minutes and so it wouldn't be particularly interesting as a kit uh, and also there's not a great uh, challenge to it there's no all the parts are uh, mostly mechanical parts in terms of their fitment so not a big challenge from the assembly point of view um, but a bit of fun once you've assembled it a uh, game to play with and uh, possibly a development platform so on balance I'd say it's probably worth what I paid for it um, in terms of it being uh, useful for a, a learning tool a bit debatable but uh, quite a, an interesting kit nonetheless